So let me show you how to determine the boundary lines, just given a, uh, a graph. So some of this stuff is from Math 10, as I just mentioned. So you might be a little rusty on it. Um, remember that horizontal lines, so horizontal lines are always y equals whatever the constant is. So this one is actually, you see there's a line right here, that's part of the one of the boundaries there. That's going to be y equals 1, because it goes through y equals 1. Okay. Now, okay, you want to mute that, please? Um, whatever that is, somebody's phone. Get rid of that, please. Uh, so that's going to be that's going to be this one. We'll work on the inequality later, but the boundary line is what we're interested in. The other one is this one. You see how this is traced like this? Okay, that's the other boundary line. And so this one is easy because uh, we can use y equals mx plus b, right? And because we're given the y-intercept, it goes through 6 there, I know what b is. So this is the y-intercept. And I can calculate pretty easily the slope as well. So that's the m part is the slope. Okay? Um, so m is, it goes from this point to this point. We know that's on the uh, line. Also this one too, so we could use either, either one. But we have to go down one, two, three, four, five, six. We have to go down six. That's the change in y or the rise, right? The change in x between this point and this point would be one, two in the positive direction. So it's over two. So m is negative three. Okay, yeah, question? Um, so going back, so it's like y y is the normal of all real numbers, but x is the normal of all real numbers. Is there something that would happen if y is the normal of all real numbers and y isn't? Or if x was and y wasn't? Yeah. Um, like for these, like so for these right now, because you see there's a shaded region, yeah. but there's also dots, right? So these dots mean that not everything that's shaded is actually part of the solution set. If there wasn't these extra dots on here, then it would be just x and y as all real numbers. But with, it, with the dots, that means it looks like it's just whole numbers. Now, could it be that, that one is whole numbers and one is all real numbers? I don't think you're going to run into that, because that's difficult to shade from a, on, a, on a graph. Um, but um, it, it's possible that, you know, let's say this line was all real numbers, then it would be shaded. If this line here, right, was not uh, all real numbers, then this wouldn't be shaded. This would maybe it's only dots. So if there's two different types of shadings, then it could possibly be that you've got something mixed up. But I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, let's finish this uh, uh, example here. So I got negative three, and I've got positive six as my y-intercept. So y equals negative three x plus six. That's going to be the boundary line there. To find the inequality, again we test point zero zero. And this has to be included in the solution set here. So 0 um, compared with negative 3 times 0 plus 6. That would be 0 compared with 6. So 0 is less than 6. And the boundary line is included. So we'll put a, a, a or equal to there. So this is going to be less than or equal to. And that's what we have here as a solution, or as an inequality. And then the points for the y1 is all above the line, so it's y is greater than or equal to 1. Now, uh, just, just going over again, if you did not have the y-intercept, like uh, the last question that we ended up doing, you could do it a different way uh, for the line, and I'll just, I'll just go over that one more time. So the other uh, equation or form of a line is the point-slope form, which looks like this. It's just a rearrangement of the, the slope uh, formula. But if uh, all you need here is the slope, and you need one point, x, y coordinate. So you need x1, y1. So you need the slope and a point. That's why it's called the point slope form. And so uh, we calculated the slope already. So the slope we calculated as negative 3. And if you choose just one point that's, that you know is on the line, then you can build uh, a unique equa uh, e equation for the line. And it might look different than someone else's, honestly, because there's multiple ways you could express a line, the same line, different ways you could write it. But if you choose one point, like this one right here is point two zero, right? So if you choose that one, 
then the 2 would be the x value and the 0 would be the y value. So it would look like this, y minus 0 equals negative 3 times x minus, what's that? 2. two. So we have y equals negative 3x plus 6 when you distribute that, and that's exactly what we got uh, before. Okay, so uh, slope y-intercept form, if you know the y-intercept, great. If you don't know the y-intercept, you could use point-slope form. And you just need to calculate the slope between any two points on your line, and then just use one of the points that you used, any point that you know is on the line, and you can get um, an equation. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you would determine the inequality by using a test point or something. How's that feel? Good? That clears things up? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Um, so would that only work on the point on the out, out, outer line, or would that work for any point? Uh, are you talking about would it work for any point in the region? Yeah. To get this boundary line? Yeah. No. No, you, can, you only have to use points that would be on the boundary line in order to get an equation for that boundary line, you can't use other points. Because if you use other points, then you're, if you use the same slope but another point, then you're determining the equation of the line that would go through the point that you selected. It would not be this one if you choose a different point. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you have to use, um, to, to come up with the inequality or the, the equation that forms the boundary line, you have to find, um, you have to use a point that is on that boundary. Yeah. And then to find the slope, you have to use two points that are on, you know, that are on that boundary to do the difference in rise. So here it's negative six, and the difference in run here it's positive two, six, negative six over two. Yeah? Okay, hi. On the test, if you were to like, just like have it where you don't see the, where the y intercept happens, yep. and you just like draw it, but you still get it right, would you mark uh, it? Yeah, no, that's fine. If you, so if you, yeah, like going back to that last example then. Um, I don't know where I had or I showed it, but if you had if you had something like this and you had a line like this, okay, and you knew this point and you knew this point, um, if if this was if if you had a graph, if you had lines and everything like that, and you with your ruler could extend this back and you know for sure that this is like negative four or whatever, you could use that as your line. You just better be sure that this is actually negative four and not negative four point zero two or something. You know what I mean? So yeah, so it's safer to use the points that you know are given, and that's for any math question. Uh, if you use another point that's un that you're unsure of, the chance you could be wrong. So you want to use the points that you're actually sure of. But um, but yeah, to answer your question, if you were to extend this back properly and um, and show me that, that you got your equation from this y-intercept, like so somehow display this in your work, that hey, this is where I got b from, b equals negative four, and you show me where you got it from. Um, then yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah. Another question about this or no? That answers this question. Okay.